Hello everyone, I'm Cody. We're going to be talking about the chalcogenides, uh, and more specifically the 2D chalcogenides, and their properties such as the heat capacity and conductivity, the applications uh, for the chalcogenides, such as uh, the semiconductors, uh, the chalcogenide glass, and photoluminescence. And I got most of this information from the journals and manufacturers, as well as the in Wikipedia. So what is a chalcogen? Um, chalcogens are the group 16 elements, oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, polonium, and livermorium. Uh, so on your right here, you have the chalcogen groups that I highlighted. And then on your left are the, the various properties of the different elements, uh, such as the atomic mass, atomic number, and radius. So a chalcogenide is made up of sulfur, selenium, tellurium, or polonium, uh, plus a, an electropositive element and does not include oxygen, which are called oxides, and it doesn't include livermorium because of the half-life. And some examples here of the chalcogenides are zinc sulfide and nickel sulfide. So to get a better idea of what kind of structures you're looking at here, on the right is the copper sulfide and the left is the nickel sulfide. So these are the two-dimensional dichalcogenides. MOS2 is the most common dichalcogenide, and it adopts a layered structure, as you see on the right here. And on the left is going to be the monocalcogenide. So there are several types of defects with the chalcogenides here. The vacancy defect is just going to be a missing atom. Uh, the interstitial defect is going to be uh, an atom that occupies uh, what should be a tetrahedral or octahedral hole, as you see on the right. And the Frankel defect is when an atom moves uh, to a tetrahedral octahedral hole and leaves and leaves a hole where it came from. And then the extrinsic defect are any impurities in the material. And the pre precipitates are a cluster of molecules together that change the state of the molecule um, to maybe from a liquid to a solid. Here we're going to be moving on to some applications for the chalcogenides, such as used in semiconductors, photoluminescence, chalcogenide glass, um, CDs, and others. So semiconductors are materials that have a conductivity between conductors and non-conductors or insulators. Um, they can be pure elements, such as the most common would be silicon or germanium. And they can also be compounds. Uh, in this case, we're using the calcogens. Um, the calcogens have wide band gaps, and some of the uh, thermal electric properties are that they have a low thermal conductivity. And they're also very thin, which is important because uh, usually the thinner the better when it comes to the semiconductors. So depending on the different material that you have, the photoluminescence is going to give off different colors depending on the conduction band. Uh, and this is used to image and test solar panels for imperfections. Uh, it can be used to check the quality of the crystalline structures of uh, semiconductors, and it can also be used for uh, phosphor ther thermometry, uh, used for measuring temperature. So this is a little bit about the calcogenide glass. Uh, the calcogenide glasses are used for emerging infrared technology. Um, they're smaller, lighter, and don't require internal cooling systems. Um, it, they have a constant pressure heat capacity, and the infrared thermal in, imaging technology is um, what it's used for. So CDs actually use uh, calcogenide materials. On your right, you have a CD here, and then on the left, 
is going to be the 2D structure of uh, graphene, which is not a calcogenide, but I just wanted I just wanted you to see the 2D um, structure of it. And the CD is going to be made of the zinc sulfide and silicon dioxide. Uh, so in the next few slides here, I'm going to be talking about uh, some journals, and then uh, this. So this is from a manufacturer, um, and then you can see the detail is uh, there's a lot of detail there for the thermal imaging. And then this cable here is going to be the arsenic trisulfide, uh, which helps reduce the data loss. So I also looked at some new research here. Uh, so in contrast to the silica, um, which predominantly is a passive material, uh, the calcogenides exhibit active properties and are highly nonlinear. Um, the calcogenide glasses uh, form a thin film and can be used for optical data storage and in manufacturing of highly efficient solar cells. Uh, adding tellurium to the glass tends to increase transmission at infrared wavelengths whereas sulfur, um, it, it aids in transmission at uh, visible wavelengths. And then unlike silica fibers, the calcogen fibers can be drawn from a preform, but unlike silica, um, the temperature of a calcogenide is gonna be close to the crystallization temperature when drawing, and uh, the crystallization weakens a fiber and it alters the optical properties so you don't want it to crystallize and um, there's alternative techniques that uh, try to prevent this um, however it's hard to make without any impurities um, and even a few parts per million can uh, sometimes ruin the product so another journal here talks about the germanium calcogenides, which I'm not too familiar with, but they say they have a wide range of applications, uh, such as the phase change memories to radio frequency switches and ovionic threshold switches, and also thermoelectric and photovoltaic devices, um, which the goal here is to just increase performance, efficiency, and longevity. And that's true for all new um, compounds that are being created that are trying to increase performance. Going back to the calcogen elements, um, sulfur here is used in black gunpowder, matches in fireworks, and is used in uh, uh, for acids in hydrogen sulfide, and also a part of multiple amino acids such, uh, such as cysteine. And then here are the um, properties of it. Um, most notable, the melting and boiling points um, being on the lower side. Talking a little bit about selenium here, uh, it's used in multiple enzymes, uh, such as peroxidase to break up peroxides and glutathione peroxidase to help protect, protect the organism from oxidative, oxidative damage. Tellurium, like we talked about before, is uh, used in optical refraction applications such as uh, fiber optics and also in coloring ceramics um, as well as uh, cadmium tel telluride uh, in photovoltaics and infrared optical windows um, and then the te tellurium, tellurium is used uh, to vulcanize rubber uh, to tint glass and in solar cells uh, as well as CDs and DVDs. And it can be doped with silver, gold, and copper or tin in semiconductor applications. So this is a, a little bit about doping. Uh, when you dope a material, it's called an extrinsic semiconductor. Um, there's dramatic changes in the electrical properties uh, just by a few elements, just by a few molecules. And then doping is also used to control the color in some pigments. And then down below is going to be the um, commonly doped molecules in silicon. So these are some benefits of the calcogenides overall. Um, they're more expensive to switch at first, but after it could be cheaper due to the increased efficiency. Um, one reason why the solar panels are not as widespread as they should be is uh, because of the reduced efficiency. And if we increase the efficiency, they'll be uh, cheaper. And then the more efficiency means that less power is needed 
which means that the final product could um, draw less power, which also reduces cost. And then the calcogenide is also useful for laser surgery, which requires a wavelength around three uh, micrometers. Uh, and the calcogenides have more accuracy. And it also has a lower weight uh, than some other semiconductors, which is important in electronics like a cell phone or a small computer. So this is the efficiency of the solar panels over time. And as you can see here, um, all the different uh, discoveries um, about the different compounds um, used to uh, create a more efficient solar panel. And that's all I got, everyone. Thanks for watching. This has been about the 2D uh, calcogenides.